What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. My name is Nick, also known as Clickwid, and I am joined by my partner in crime, Dustin, otherwise known as Project KSL. And guys, this week we have a jam-packed episode for you. We are going to be talking about this past Thursday night's game between the Ravens and the Steelers. Then we're going to answer a bunch of your questions that you guys asked both on Twitter and in the YouTube comments of my videos. And last, we are going to give you guys our studs and duds for this week's games. But the first thing that we need to actually talk about this week is the suspension to one of the biggest fantasy football stars that there is, and that is, of course, Adrian Peterson. Now, Peterson was booked and released on a $15,000 bail earlier Saturday, and that was after felony charges of injury to a child. So first of all, we need to talk about this situation, Dustin, Mm -hmm. because I just don't think there's a more despicable thing that a person can do than harm a child. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. What he did, I mean, if you saw the pictures, they're pretty reprehensible. I I mean, it, I, I don't really know what else needs to be said other than, you know, what he did is pretty bad. And I I don't think that there's a I, I think there's a legit chance he doesn't play for us the season based on that. Yeah, and and I think, you know, of course, the uh, the obvious comeback that people have is that well, he grew up this way, and, yeah. you know, the South is different than the North. And, yeah, and just to let you guys know, this did, I, I believe it happened in Texas. Is that right? Yeah, it happened, I think, around Houston is what they said. Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously it is a little bit different of a culture down there in Texas than yeah, it is no here in, in Min- up here in Minnesota. Um, so, obviously, there's a little bit different feelings here in Minnesota. But even still, I don't think it matters. Once you've seen the pictures of what happened, I mean, yeah, this I kid mean, was— he's four. He was four yeah. years old, and he was beaten with a, a stick, basically. Yeah, beaten with a stick till he's bleeding. And yeah. and I don't care what you call it. I don't care if you think it's a tradition or something like that. <laughs> that is not okay by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. I'm I'm not going to get on this soapbox. I, I promised myself I wouldn't. But, um, I mean, I, I agree with what Dustin said. I mean, realistically, there is a very real possibility that this guy doesn't play again this season. And the Vikings actually deactivated Peterson for this Sunday's yeah, game. they made the smart move. Yeah, and I think so too. Not just from a PR standpoint, but um, I mean, from a standpoint of that, you don't want your team to be thinking about that. <laughs> you know, can you imagine, uh, you know, somebody who yeah, is an offensive lineman about. or something like that, and and they mm-hmm. see Adrian Peterson's out there beating his kids, and he's <laughs> supposed to block for Adrian Peterson. He's in the back of his mind, he's thinking what a piece of shit this guy is. Yeah. So I, I think even from a team standpoint, as much as it's going to hurt to have Adrian Peterson gone, uh, for team morale almost, I, I think it's a good move for him, and, and obviously from the PR standpoint. But yeah. The big it, it question, exactly, and the big question going forward is that we don't really know what the actual situation is going to be. I mean, the Vikings voluntarily deactivated him. He's not suspended at this point by the NFL, so uh, we don't know what's going to happen with that. His next court appearance isn't for another few weeks, and the actual trial actually isn't scheduled for another few months, if I remember correctly. Yep. So, I mean, we really don't know. But the Vikings actually had a pretty similar situation like this a couple of years ago uh, with one of their cornerbacks. I think it was Chris Cook. And uh, he actually ended up being uh, deactivated basically until the— the, the until it got uh, resolved. Yeah, until yeah. it got resolved. So, um, Chris you know, Cook is probably I different than Adrian Peterson, though. But it, it was. We'll see how they play it out. But. Right, and, and Chris Cook is not Adrian Peterson. Yeah, so that's the thing. Uh, I mean, it's obviously a very different situation as far as that goes. But I, I do think that it's worth noting. Um, but the thing is, we need to know what the fantasy implications are of this, uh, as as fantasy football players, uh, as both of us are, and then the people listening to this podcast, they want to know who do you think is the guy to own here in this backfield with the Adrian Peterson situation happening this Sunday? Who do you think is going to be the guy? Is it going to be Matt Asiata or is it going to be Jarek McKinnon? It's going to be Matt Asiata. I I think that, I mean, every sign that the Vikings have given you is that Asiata is going to be their guy, that they're going to go with. McKinnon will probably spell him, and he'll probably get some work when Asiata needs rest or whatever the case. But I don't really think you need to own McKinnon. But I think, I mean, if, if Asiata is available in your leagues, I'd go pick him up immediately if you're in a league where waivers aren't locked right now. Because I think that, like I said, I don't think Adrian Peterson is going to play anytime soon, and I don't think anyone's going to take Asiata's job away from him. I definitely think he should be owned in 100% of fantasy leagues right now. Yeah, I think I agree with that as well. I I mean, we kind of got into a a similar topic about this uh, this past week when we were talking about the Browns situation with Ben Tate being injured, and we don't know how long he's going to be out. And and although it's not necessarily, uh, you know, an exciting backfield outside of that, um, these guys are starters 
for fantasy rosters because yeah. they're starters for NFL teams. Yep. I mean, if if we go out there and we see that it's a 50-50 split this weekend between Jarek McKinnon and, and Matt Asiata, then guess what? We're probably not going to be excited about yeah, either of the guys. Yeah, both or hoping for the best with whatever random you pick that week to start. <laughs> exactly. So uh, it's a tough situation, and the Vikings offense, quite frankly, really is not very good. They looked amazing in week one against the crappy, hapless Rams. But... Yeah, the Rams just look like they've already given up week one. Yeah, so, I, I mean, to me, I just, I'm not super excited about either of these guys, but I agree with us, and I think that Matt Asiata is somebody that you do have to go out there and get. So, I, I want to ask you, is Matt Asiata then a guy who you're using your top waiver claim on? I know we, we you already mentioned, if if your league is a league where you don't have waivers and you can just go pick up guys right, right now, which yeah. most leagues are, standard ESPN, NFL, and Yahoo, is that you can currently just go out there and pick up players. Yeah. Are Absolutely. you picking up Matt Asiata? Or are you putting your number one waiver on him though? If you're in a league where it's just constant waivers, I mean, again, if you're in, if you if it's already locked right now and you have a high waiver position, I don't know because I think I might wait a week and just see. Yeah, but it, I mean, again, if if it's not locked, like most things aren't, pick him up. Don't even worry about it. Pick him, stash him, and then if nothing else, let's assume he has a huge game this week. Try and trade me if you have depth at running back. Yeah, I mean, he's a starting running back in a league, so. Yeah, and then just hope he does something this weekend against yeah, New England. Yeah, gets two uh, TDs or something. Yeah. You know, he gets a nice 16 for you, and you find the guy who has invested in Danny Woodhead or something. Yeah, I mean, you try and trade him to that guy. I I like it. I, I pretty much agree with that. So let's let's do a little bit of, of would you rather with Matt Asiata. Oh, so, so let me ask you, would you rather Matt Asiata or Terrence West going forward? <sighs> that's that's a good one. I, you know, I, I'd probably say Asiata. Because I still think that unless Ben Tate has a season ending injury, I really think that he's going to be the guy. I mean, obviously the same philosophy is with Adrian Peterson, mm-hmm. but it depends when you think Adrian Peterson is back. Of and if you're like me and you think there's a serious possibility he doesn't play the rest of the season, then I think Asiata has a much higher priority because I think he's a much safer guy to hang on to a significant role than Terrence West. I think that's fair. Um, I, I I think you're absolutely right for the the entirety of the season. For the immediate future, if you're in a situation where you need a guy for the next three to six weeks, I actually like Terrence West a little bit better. Um, I think that the situation might be better because I don't think that Minnesota is really going to run the ball as much as we expect them to without Adrian Peterson. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they have Cordell Patterson, Greg Jennings, Kyle Rudolph. I mean, and the other thing, too, the other thing, too, is that we saw Terrence West can look decent in his in his first game he ran for 100 yards and that yeah. was after ben tate got oh, he was now, good in college fluky too, yeah. fluky a little bit don't get me wrong i understand that's just one game we're not over we're not over committing on terrence west but i think that he's shown that he can do something so there's reason to at least have a little bit of interest in him yeah so i'm gonna i think that's close between those two but i'm gonna give the slight edge to terrence west so next person matt asiata or another guy who had an interesting week one and that was mark ingram oh mark ingram yeah, absolutely. I mean, just just the way that I mean, two TDs. It seems like it seems like he's going to have the bigger priority on the goal line. Which I mean, who knows with New Orleans? But I do think that Mark Ingram has a bigger role in that offense. I mean, and, and just flat out, New Orleans is going to score a ton of points this year. And I Agreed. think even if you don't, even if he doesn't have the hundred yard games, I think his TD potential week to week is pretty good. And I think that alone probably eclipses any real Asiata super upside. So I I definitely probably go Ingram. Okay, and then the last one that I wanted to ask you with with Matt Asiata is him or Zach Stacy, because <laughs> I know how much you love Zach Stacy. Oh man, I, I mean, again, you it, have to I, say Zach Stacy. Stop if, it. If, I mean, if Adrian Peterson's out for the year, I'm taking Asiata. That's oh, I just I can't want, stand I want you. Nothing to do with Zach Stacy. He's not good. <laughs> He's not good. <laughs> Week one, Benny Cunningham has more snaps than him. It's Benny Cunningham. Okay. Okay. Fuck both those guys. Fuck that whole situation. Okay. I, I can I can kind of see where you're coming from with that. I mean, obviously their offense is really really bad, but I mean Zach Stacy was a really the productive running back. The defense really bad too. The whole team just looks like a fucking cesspool. Yeah, fair, fair. But um, okay, so that that's pretty much going to explain how we feel about the Matt Asiata situation. Um, you know, we have a little bit of differing opinions on what his actual value is, but I think for the most part, we're in agreement that he has potential to be an RB two going. Yeah, forward. I don't I don't think that here are some like you're going to get like Jamal Charles production out of him or anything like that. But I think that he could be a week to week starter in the right in the right situation in okay. the right league. Fair enough. Fair enough. So let's get to the nitty gritty of what really is important here, and that is. 
the guy who's owned in every single league out there, <laughs> uh, and that is Adrian Peterson. He was a top three pick in every draft this year, yep. but do you sit and wait on him to come back, or do you try and ship him off to another owner who's willing to take the risk? If it's me personally, if I get offered something like Ryan Matthews, I take it and I don't even question it. I'm like, yep, yeah, I hit the accept button faster than you can blink. I, I, <laughs> but I mean, again, it's what you personally think is going to come out of that of his deactivation. I mean, if you think this is going to be a season long thing that keeps dragging out and he doesn't play, then yeah, I mean, you do whatever it takes to move him right now because you obviously don't think he's going to play. But obviously, if you even get Adrian Peterson for you know six seven weeks, he's still probably more valuable than a Ryan Matthews. Sure. So it's just it's all about how you personally feel about that situation. Fair enough, but I think that we, you know, we really have to consider that Adrian Peterson is is in a really tough situation because even if he does come back at this point, uh, you know, it could be four, five, six, seven weeks from now, and if he does finish out this, this season with the Vikings, uh, and he does end up playing. I question if Minnesota is going to have the same commitment to him at that point in the season as they do right now. Right. You assume and the that, offense would change a little bit and everything yeah, else. Yeah. You're going to see different game plans. And, of course, you know, they're going to get the ball to Adrian Peterson if yeah, he's on the absolutely. field. But, I mean, honestly, though, the team could decide that even if the NFL doesn't suspend him, they could suspend him. Yeah, exactly. As a PR move. Not play him. Yeah. I mean, you, we've seen what the Ravens look like right now with the Ray Rice situation, them trying to force him onto the field and the, the PR nightmare that that yeah, accrued. Absolutely. I mean, and the, and the uh, Panthers are getting a shitload of it right now with Greg Hardy, too. Yeah, exactly. So, Ray McDowell, 49ers getting bad PR, too. So, yeah, they very well might make that move, too, even if he doesn't get officially suspended. So that's a really tough situation. So this one I think is interesting. I want to do a would you rather with Adrian Peterson. Okay. Would you rather... For the remainder of the season, based on what we know right now, would you okay. rather have Adrian Peterson or Matt Asiata? <laughs> ah, fuck. Adrian Peterson, I guess. Just because I, I, I think that Asiata has such limited upside, and just by the sure. one in whatever chance you think Adrian Peterson is going to play, it's probably better than Asiata's upside. So just for I feel you. pure upside alone, I'd probably keep Adrian. I feel you, and my honest opinion is that I would go with Matt Asiata, and I know that sounds really yeah, crazy. You're because obviously pretty confident Adrian Peterson's not playing this year. Right, and, and and you know what? I don't necessarily – I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm 100% confident in it, but I, I question that all the pieces are going to fall into play or into mm-hmm. place for him to actually be able to play. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I yeah, if you're one of those people that doesn't think he's going to play, then you trade him for anything. Because yeah. obviously that person will play this year, and he won't. So I do think you get more in return than Matt Asiata, by the way, if you were to trade off Adrian Peterson. I think yeah. that you can still get somebody that's decent. I think you could still potentially trade him for somebody like a Mark Ingram, who yeah, we talked Mark about Ingram, before. Exactly. Yeah, and I be think Mark, target. Mark Ingram, I think, is a good guy to target if you've got Adrian Peterson. So something to think about there, guys. Um, don't ship him off. Don't drop him unless yeah, don't you find him. out that yeah. he is suspended for the rest of the year. You can year. trade him first, and yeah, if you can, you probably can trade hold on him and see. But yeah, yep. don't drop him. Exactly. So let's move on now to our second topic of the night, and that is the Ravens absolutely whipping the shit out of the Steelers on Thursday yeah. night. I mean, the Steelers mustered a measly six points on offense, and that was despite Le'Veon Bell having over 100 yards mm-hmm. uh, of total really offense. Good. Yeah. So, uh, what's the situation there? I mean, is is Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell are they really the only two guys in this offense who are even worth rostering at this point in fantasy football? I still am definitely rostering Marcus Wheaton. I think they've shown okay. a. I think they've definitely shown that they are trying to get him involved in the game plan. I think that he's a pretty talented player, and I think that going far, forward, Marcus Wheaton will have those games where it's like, damn, Marcus Wheaton just broke out that game. Sure. I don't know if there's going to be a whole lot of consistency to him, but I'm definitely holding on to Marcus Wheaton because I don't think there's anything worth are out there worth dropping him for i mean antonio brown and, and Le'Veon bell i think seriously could both finish top five at their position but yeah outside of those two guys though yeah i mean it's marcus wheaton and pretty much nobody else maybe heath miller maybe but that's probably about it i think you and i both need to take a uh a slap on the wrist for Le'Veon bell at this point yeah no yeah seriously he looks damn good yeah, we, we really both came good. into this season, and we did not like him um, for a variety I mean, of everything, reasons. Everything everything Pittsburgh was saying was everyone. every indication was that he's splitting with Blunt, their co-RB1s, yep. all that shit. They brought in Blunt. They uh, drafted Dre Archer. Uh, I, every every sign was that it's going to be a running back by committee. They're not that committed to Le'Veon Bell. And then Le'Veon Bell is just their workhorse, and he looks phenomenal. 
Yeah. And and LeGarrette Blunt did get a goal line touchdown. Yeah. So it's not like that isn't happening, but I think that's the the extent of what he's going to be used for. Yeah. And I know I know Le'Veon Bell scoring touchdowns is important, but I still think he can get into the end zone even if he's not the guy at the one yard line. I yeah, think people exactly. really overrate the number of touchdowns that happen at the one yard line in, fa- in fantasy football, yep. especially when you've got a guy like Big Ben. Because Big Ben could very easily be like, yeah, I'm going to run it in from the one-yard line myself. You guys yep. can go to hell. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's one of those situations. I just don't really even give it much thought. No. Um, it, I mean, it happens. a gold mine, too, because they clearly yeah. are passing the ball as much as they can. Exactly. So, I like Le'Veon Bell a lot going yeah, forward. I think him. that he's very valuable. Um, on the other side of the ball, Torrey Smith just doesn't even uh. look like he's on the field. Yeah. I mean, he had over 1,100 yards receiving last year, and now through two games, he has four catches. Mm-hmm. So, uh, meanwhile, Steve Smith is balling out. I mean, Steve Smith Sr., excuse me, Steve yeah. Smith Sr., he's balling out, man. He's got 15 targets in two games. I mean, that's <laughs> that's got to be pretty damn impressive for a guy who we, a lot of us really wrote off yeah. as somebody that wasn't really a, a much of a fantasy value this year. Yep. I mean, are you buying Steve Smith going forward as a wide receiver, too, like he's currently producing? Well, I mean, maybe. I mean, right now, they're not really giving me much of a sign to say he won't be because he's getting the targets. I mean, so much of fantasy wide receivers is just getting the targets thrown at him. And if that can sustain, then I don't see why not. I mean, Torrey Smith is just the poster boy for different scheme doesn't make you a different player. We know what Torrey Smith is. He's, I mean, I understand he had, what did he have, like 1,500 yards last year? 1,100. Like 1, but yeah, it was yeah. it was a good year. Yeah, he had a good year, but it's just, it doesn't, I mean, the Ravens were just abysmal. A lot of those were just deep chuckets when they were down. Yeah. Fair. I, I, I don't think that just because Kubiak comes in and he installs zone blocking that all of a sudden Torrey Smith's now a viable wide receiver one. He's not that kind of a player. He's just not that good. Yeah. Torrey Smith is, a, is an okay receiver. You know, he has, he has good speed. But he doesn't do the other things, route running in terms of like uh, going up for a ball, shielding yourself, you know, play at the line to get off the get off of a press. He just doesn't do that sort of stuff um, frequently so, enough to really be, ever be a sustainable wide receiver one. So I always thought his ADP yeah. was high, anyways. I agree. Um, would you Would you agree with me at this point that Steve Smith's more worth quite a bit more than uh, oh, yeah. Torrey Smith? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah. yeah if Tor- Steve Smith's value is significantly higher. I mean, just in targets alone, they're clearly putting a bigger focus on getting Steve Smith the ball. Yeah, and in the red zone too, which I think is really interesting because Steve Smith was never a huge touchdown scorer in Carolina, yeah. and he didn't score uh, this past week, but. Yeah, on yeah, Thursday their targets night. Are there. But yeah, I mean, if they throw him the ball six, seven times when they're at the three yard line like they did, I mean, eventually he's going to score touchdowns. Yeah, uh, it's just it's it's a matter of like Dustin said, the number of targets going somebody's way. So I I like Steve Smith going forward. He's another guy who I have to admit that I missed a little bit on so so far in this season, and we're not overreacting after two yeah, weeks, two but weeks, you but... have to bump him up on your on your list a little bit, at yeah, least absolutely. into a consideration as a guy that you're starting every week as your flex and yep. if not if you have an underperforming guy if you have somebody who is not doing what you thought they were going to do bump him up as to a wide receiver too because if he's getting those targets even if he's catching six passes for 80 yards that's probably good enough to be your wide receiver two or a flex yep. so i like that uh now now as far as the running game goes um i thought it was kind of interesting that bernard pierce got 22 carries and justin Forsett only got eight yeah pretty much what now, i predicted i mean yeah and we pretty much predicted that coming into this game but do you think that either of these guys can continue to be this productive, or do you think that people should be just thinking, you know, basically what we thought about Bernard Pierce going forward um, as of last week, and then maybe Justin Forsett were downgrading a little bit, although he did look good on the carries that he got. Yeah, what do you think I mean, about him going he, forward? He broke off that one run that looked yeah. pretty nice. I, I still think for the most part, if you're in a situation where you were invested in the Ravens' backfield, Bernard Pierce is clearly the guy you want to own. Yeah, I'm not starting Justin Forsett in any league unless I'm just incredibly desperate and looking, just hoping he breaks a TD. Yeah, I, I, think, I pretty much agree. I think at this point, uh, you know, you probably roster Justin Forsett unless there's somebody yeah, I mean, jumping out at you. If you can, if you can get Matt Asiata instead of Justin Forsett, you go do that, of course. Yeah, exactly. Um, but other than that, I, I think you can roster him. Just don't put him in your lineup until we see something that yeah, I mean, changes. If Pierce goes down, then yeah, his value is obviously higher too. But I, I think right. Bernard Pierce could be a viable fantasy starter most weeks. I, I do too. I, do too. I don't know if he'll have crazy upside, but I certainly think he has, you know, 10, 11, 12, 10, 11 points a game upside for fantasy. And that's good. You know, that's something that's certainly worth rostering, certainly worth starting at a lot of leagues. So I, I think Bernard yep. Pierce is going to be productive going forward. Agreed. So last thing that I want to talk about regarding this game was the tight end situation. And that was an interesting one after week one mm-hmm. because Dennis Pitta caught 10 passes yeah. in week one. 
And then on Thursday night, he caught three. So yeah. I think that there's, uh, I think that the real Dennis Pitta is somewhere in between that. Yeah, exactly. That's but, what I was about to say. But I think that Owen Daniels catching two touchdown passes is an interesting, uh, it's an interesting side note. What do you think about Owen Daniels? Are you buying him? Fuck no. Fuck Owen Daniels. <laughs> nothing to do with that guy. The guy's going to come in, snake a TD every four weeks, and people are going to act like he's good again. No, fuck him. He's done. Yeah, I, I completely agree. No, Owen Daniels is not somebody that you should be wasting waiver wire claims on right now. He is just, he's a guy, you know, and this happens from time to time. It happens a lot of times for teams like the Green Bay Packers who yeah. will go out there and they'll give the ball to John Andrew Kuhn Corliss two times at there. the goal line in yeah. a game. And then people are running to the waiver wire to pick up John Kuhn. And we know what John Kuhn is, guys. Yeah. We know what Owen Daniels Don't is. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink he's, it. He's the backup tight end, and he wasn't productive when Dennis Pitta was hurt. Yep. Why would you think he's going to suddenly product, be productive now? It, it's not It's not a good situation for him. Don't bother. So let's talk about some of the listener questions that we had from earlier this week. And, guys, if you're interested in sending in questions, make sure you drop them in the comment section below. You can also tweet them to me or Dustin at Clickwood TV or at Project KSL on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and tweet those to us or leave them in the comment section. We'll do our best to answer the best ones that we have for the week. So first question it is from FGCU Rack City, and he wants to know Jay Cutler or Tom Brady here in week two. In most weeks, I definitely say Jay Cutler, but yeah. this week in particular, he, he's facing San Francisco, and Alshon Jeffrey's a game time decision. They said he probably won't play. Brandon Marshall's game time decision. They say he probably will play, so he'll be without one of his best two targets. You know, so it only I I and he's facing San Francisco. Tom Brady looks like ass. <laughs> but, I mean, he's facing Minnesota, who I mean, they look great in week one. I don't know how good they'll really be for the rest of the season. So I, I'd probably pick Brady. Brady still has Gronk. He still has Edelman. He still has Re uh, Vereen, excuse me. And I think that uh, that alone, those three weapons, I think would be enough to push him over Jay Cutler. I'd start Tom Brady this week. Agreed. Tom Brady this week, I think that he is definitely the more reliable quarterback this weekend. Um, obviously, Jay Cutler outperformed him in week one. And honestly, we both have Jay Cutler ranked ahead of Tom Brady going forward. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, but this week in particular, yeah. But yeah, we're talking about week two. And I think Tom Brady has a lot of things going for him this week. Um, the Patriots traditionally, and I hate to do this because I, I refer to these as Brett Favre stats because they're just stupid things that ESPN <laughs> likes to put on the screen Jeez when, stats. you know. The, the game after the Patriots lost, Tom Brady has 19 touchdowns and one interception, you know, crap like that. But yeah. the reality is truly that Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, when they lose games, they tend to come out the next week and absolutely whip the shit out of the team that they play. Yeah. So I think that that's a, a thing that's going toward him. Obviously, the, the Alshon Jeffrey thing uh, with him likely not playing, it sounds like at this point. Um, that has to downgrade Jay Cutler a little bit. We still like Jay Cutler even this yeah, weekend. Yeah, I mean, um, I I'd, I wouldn't feel terrible starting him, but if, if yeah. those are my options, I'm picking Tom Brady. Yeah, and and Shane Vereen is always a viable pass catcher yeah, out of the Shane backfield. Unfortunately, we just don't love Tom Brady's weapons as wide receivers. Uh, we ba they basically have Julian Edelman, Edelman and then a bunch of assholes. Yeah, I love so. Julian Edelman. So yeah, I mean, we we we're gonna go with Tom Brady this week here in week two. Uh, next question is from Jason Kirk, and Jason wants to know Keenan Allen, and he is up against the Seattle Seahawks, or Kelvin Benjamin against the Detroit Lions. Let me answer this one because I think that this one is. Uh, <laughs> we're probably gonna agree on this one. So. Yeah, I think we're gonna agree with, on this one. But Kelvin Benjamin is somebody who we were both very, very high on coming into this year, but yeah. we were also both very high on Keenan Allen. Yeah. Now, again, this is a similar situation to Jay Cutler and Tom Brady because I think that we would agree that Keenan Allen is the higher-ranked guy going forward over Kelvin Benjamin. Yeah, absolutely. But this week in particular, this is an awful matchup for Keenan Allen. He had a yep. horrible week one when he was locked up against Pe Patrick Peterson for much of the day, and now he's going to be locked up against Richard Sherman well, for most of the day. Around, but even so, I mean, yeah. after, I mean uh, not Walter Thurman, excuse me. Uh, Byron Maxwell is, you yeah. know, he's, he's a good corner too. So. Yeah, and, it, and it's hard to beat those safeties deep. Exactly. Yeah, no one's getting handled <laughs> on so, so uh, Earl, Ch Earl Thomas, Cam Chancellor, uh, you know, those guys are pretty much the enforcers. And I just, I do not like Keenan Allen's opportunity for a big game this week. No. Keenan Allen could very got big time potential for a big game. Exactly. Kelvin Benjamin could definitely come out this week and put up big numbers against the Lions. Um, yeah, he, the like Lions. Gene Mathis to cover him. I mean, yeah, he's, yeah. I mean, Cam Newton will be back. Cam Newton and him were building chemistry in the preseason. 
I yep. certainly and think this could be a huge they scored in game week for one. Benjamin. Benjamin yeah. made an awesome catch in week one for a touchdown. If you guys yep. didn't see that, go back and look at the highlights. That was beastly. Yeah, and that's the reason why we were high on Kelvin Benjamin. Um, I actually have Kelvin Benjamin as one of my starting wide receivers in an expert league that I'm in on fantasy football today. Um, it, it's, he's a guy that I relied on going into the season as a starter. Yep. So I'm very high on him. I, I'm a believer in him as a fantasy wide receiver going forward. And especially this week in a great matchup. Yeah, absolutely. But the Chiefs wish they had him <laughs> yeah, sitting exactly. on the bench. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So next on the list, we have a, a question from Ben Jim 813 and he wants to know, should I trade Calvin Johnson for Deshaun Jackson and oh, Russell Wilson? Oh, God. Dustin, let, let me get your thoughts on that. Do you give up Megatron for Deshaun Jackson and Russell Wilson? No. Fuck no. You reply, <laughs> tell the guy to fuck off. It's not happening. Like, no, that's a terrible trade. Yeah, absolutely. No. This is no. an awful, awful trade. <laughs> uh, I, we, I always put no. this one in here just for, for comedy purposes because Calvin Johnson, I mean, we saw it in week one. The, the guy in... Not even just week one. He dominates. Yeah, he the course dominates. of his career, Calvin yeah. Johnson is legitimately one of the top receivers in the history of the NFL. This yeah. guy is downright amazing. He is in the prime of his career here, and I just don't see any reason why you would trade him for no. anything other than another no. elite player. Yeah, Russell Wilson. Yeah, if you're elite running back or an elite, or elite, like Jimmy Graham and something else, maybe, or elite yeah. running back. You know, Demarius Thomas, maybe in something else. But yeah, but and, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Jackson, hell no. I mean, if we're talking about a standard scoring league, Russell Wilson and Deshaun Jackson is not even close. No. But if you're in a two QB league, um, it, it does close the no. gap just a little bit. But we're still sticking with Calvin Johnson, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, without question. Yeah, yeah. two QB, three QB. No, fuck no. I'm not giving him Calvin Johnson for that. No way. Completely agreed. So next question is coming from HM two M three sixty, and he wants to know: Do I play No Sean Moreno against the Bills, or do I play Frank Gore against the Bears? Dustin. Both of them had a big time, uh, or both of them look like they have big time potential this week. Frank Gore obviously has the right. track record. Noshan had a nice week one. Who are you playing this week? I'm playing Frank Gore because I, the, the Bears defense is still a train wreck. The Bills whipped up yeah. on him. I, and Frank Gore's the guy that everyone says is going to fall off every single year, and it still hasn't happened. He looked damn good in week one. And even if they're going to give Carlos Hyde some carries, I still really like Frank Gore going forward for fantasy. And yep. the Bills defense, the Bills have a solid, solid front seven. They added Brandon Spikes to an already pretty good uh, defense. Mario Williams, Kyle Williams, Marcel Darius, Brandon Spikes, you know, even without even being without Kiko Alonso, I still think that's going to be a very, very tough defense for the most of the year. And they still might give Lamar Miller carries. I mean, I'm certainly still all in on Noshan being the guy there. But yep. they might just mix it up. Definitely going to Frank Gore over Noshan for this week. Yep, me too. Uh, and I like Frank Gore above Noshan for the rest of the season as well. Yeah. Um, not by as much as we thought going into the season, though. I mean, there was still questions between Lamar Miller and Noshan, but I think yep. those are now answered after just one game. And You'd I hope I know, so. I mean, Noshan's clearly better. So I mean, Yeah, we don't so. want to overreact to what we see in week one because teams just will sometimes just make asinine decisions. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is I think Frank Gore is still the guy. I know Carlos Hyde had a couple nice runs, but he's still getting – by far the most carries of the team. Yeah. He's he's in a good situation because the 49ers a lot of times will pull out far ahead in games like they did against the Cowboys. And then guess what? He's going to touch the ball a lot in those yeah. contests. So we love Frank Gore. Um, he's very, very reliable. He does not yeah, put up very many stinker games. Yeah. So I, I like Frank Gore going forward. Uh, the other thing to consider is Chicago's defense is not what it used to be. No, it's terrible. Yeah, They're not terrible last year. They are not the guys that you remember being the fantasy superstars that were getting 15 defensive touchdowns a year. Yep. These guys are bad. They were horseshit against the run last year. Yep. Last week, they allowed the Bills to just destroy them. Yep. So, uh, I mean, I'm not impressed with what I see from the Chicago defense, and I definitely like Frank Gore in this week's yep. games. Uh, but I will say... If you've got guys that are – if you have a way to get both those guys into your lineup, or you're trying to do that, right? Yeah, I mean, I assume so. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think they're both worth starting this week. I just think yeah. that Noshan probably you has have, a lower floor. Let me let me put it this way. You have both the guys in your top 24, right? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So they, they both should yeah. be RB2s in a 12-team yeah, standard absolutely. score. I mean, if you're, if you're PPR picking PPR between league. the two, yeah, you're splitting hairs. But yeah. I definitely think Frank Gore is ahead of Noshan for this week. Okay. Fair enough, and I completely agree with that. So, next question, and this is the final one from the listeners this week, and that is from King Boss Twenty Seven, and he wants to know what should I do with Tony Romo? Do I cut him? Do I keep mm. him? What do I do, Dustin? If I've got Tony Romo on my roster, and he had that horrible week one, you don't cut him. 
I mean, he's just because he has two, he has too good of a track record. <laughs> and not, I mean, you, you don't cut a guy with a track record like that after one game. You just don't. What you might want to do is see, again, we talked about it last week, see if Jake Locker's still out there and pick up yep. Jake Locker starting. That's what week. I was going to say. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, if it, I think you can hold on to him because I think there's going to be enough other guys like a Carson Palmer or, you know, Jake Locker that you can play this week, see what happens with Romo. The only super thing concerning about Tony Romo going forward is, man, it looks like he knows his defense is terrible and he has to try to get a TD every possession. He was making horrible throws he just usually doesn't make. And that's concerning if that persists. Yeah, um, you know, as a Cowboys fan, I I have a little soft spot spot in my heart for Tony Romo, of course. But um, I mean, the reality of the situation, like Dustin said, is that he was making throws that I'm not used to Tony Romo making. And I know the big joke is always that Tony Romo throws so many interceptions. But guys, he threw 31 touchdowns last year with 10 picks. Yeah, 10 picks. Uh, and this year, he's thrown three in one game. Yeah, three picks in one game. And they were so, bad picks too. They weren't just yeah. dumb luck picks. They and were bad quite, picks. Quite frankly, he should have thrown four, yeah. because there was one point where he threw the ball up, and I, I forget who the pass was to. It was like a fifty-yard pass down the field, mm-hmm. and he threw it straight up into double coverage, and it was just it was just amazing timing that the ball came down. Neither of the defenders hit it, and the, the receiver came up with the catch. Yep. I, I mean, that could have very easily gone from a five-point. Uh, or a, a 50 yard uh, gain for Tony Romo to an interception very, yep. very easily. And that the game could have looked way worse than it did from a fantasy standpoint. And it looked mm-hmm. bad already. But I do think that Tony Romo has a good chance going forward. We talked about this going into the season. I, I put him on my fantasy sleepers list. And I know a lot of people are laughing about that at this point. But trust me, guys, this team is going to have to pot- pass the ball almost more than any other team in the league. I do not see any way that they don't throw the ball 600 times this year if Romo is healthy. They're going to put the ball up in the air. And it's going to be very, very tough to keep Tony Romo off of the fantasy scoreboards, even if he's throwing a couple interceptions. If he throws for 300 yards with two touchdowns and two picks, yep. that's a hell of still a fantasy a good game. game still a good yeah. game yeah it's still a very very good game and it's definitely good enough for him to be a fantasy starter going forward but like dustin said if you've got somebody like jake locker on your on your uh, waiver wire at this point go locker ahead and ahead pick him up jake not locker a problem specifically this week because he's playing dallas so right exactly <laughs> i i would actually yeah that's a good point i would start jake locker ahead of tony romo this week yeah without question so um yeah, let, I mean, let's wait and see what we see out of Tony Romo after this week. But uh, don't drop him unless you just are in a, an eight-team league where the quarterbacks are just easy as hell to come by. Yeah, uh, even exactly. then, I still probably wouldn't drop Romo. But yeah. All right, so let's get down to our final segment of the day, and that is our busts and our sleepers of the week. Mm-hmm. So I want to know, Dustin, who is your bust of the week? Oh, man. Well, <laughs> He's probably going to be my bust on a lot of weeks because it's Zach Stacy. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a Zach Again? Stacey award, and it, he's not good. Like, this week he's at Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay is going to have a good defense this year. I still stand mm-hmm. by that. And, mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, we already talked about this last week. He was out-snapped on the field by Benny Cunningham. I think they're going to be down. The quarterback is pro- – I, I think they're saying it's going to be Austin Davis. Sean Hill might not even play. Oh, gosh. So, the stack – yeah, I mean, stack box against him all day. And I don't think he's that good to begin with. So I think he's going to have an absolutely atrocious day. I'm not playing him. I'm probably looking for any help anywhere if I'm going to have Zach Stacy on a team this week. Fair enough. I think that Zach Stacy Sony you should probably not play this week. I'm not. In, I'm not a big fan of him. Although I will say I'm in the unfortunate situation where Zach Stacy's in my lineup in a league, and that's because Adrian Peterson's on my team. <laughs> So, yeah, we're in a good situation in that league, guys. But let's talk about who my bust of the week is, and that is a guy who, unfortunately, I have to say he's my bust of the week, and I know it's going to shock a lot of people, Uh-oh. and that is Des Bryant. Ooh. Des Bryant, one of my absolute favorite top five players in the NFL. Love the guy. But, man, that offense just looked horrible in week one. Yeah. And I know, like we just talked about, we think that Tony Romo is going to be just fine going forward. But well. this matchup <laughs> in particular, well, maybe not just fine, but yeah. I think that he'll still be a, a fantasy Sustainable. starter going forward. Yeah. So, uh, but I still think this matchup specifically against the Titans is not a good matchup. Uh, yeah, the Titans, Titans looked a lot great. than people think. Yeah, they looked great in week one. Jarrell Casey looks like, I mean, he went from being a defensive tackle to uh, to playing in a 34 defense. And now I, I just think that he has the potential to, I mean, I, I know this sounds crazy, but I think he Don't has the potential Watt. to put up J.J. Watt Don't type of numbers. No, stop it. Stop I, I really it. do. I really stop do. It. He is that good. No. He really is. He is not um, J.J. Watt. He's not the best defensive player in the league. No, 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 no. But I, I think that he can have that kind of an impact. 
So I, I do like him a lot. Um, but the big thing for this defense is that that secondary is underrated as hell. Yeah, McCoy I, I mean, really good. The Titans oh, allowed – I want to I want to drop some fantasy knowledge on you guys. The Titans allowed one quarterback to throw for more than 260 yards against them uh, after week four uh, in the no 2013 was? season. Who was it? Peyton Manning. Of Shit course. on him. It was Peyton Manning. Okay. Peyton Manning <laughs> had the best quarterback season of all time. So let's set that one aside, okay? Let's say that nobody else is Peyton Manning. No one else – threw for more than 260 yards and only one other quarterback threw for multiple touchdowns against them. So, and that was after any game after week four. So guys, this is a very, very good pass defense. I mean, obviously you can't look at what they did last year and say that they're going to do the exact same thing that they did there, that they're going to do this year, but still they're going to be a good fantasy defense. They're going to be a very tough team for people to pass on. And I don't love Des Bryant this week. I'm not saying you bench Des. Not saying you benched as lower Bryant, expectations, yeah. but you have to lower your expectations. Just like Dustin said, if you have some of these guys who are second level receivers who uh, could potentially break out, make sure you put them in your ro- in your lineup this week. Um, I-, I think I'm more considering Des almost to be a low end wide receiver too at this point. And if yeah. you're in, in a situation where you play in like the weekly fantasy leagues on DraftKings or FanDuel or one of those type of websites, don't go with Des. Way too expensive. The upside is not there. Yep, completely agree with you. I would not start Dez this week. I mean, if I have other options, I'm probably not starting Dez because he's probably going to draw Jason McCourty. Yeah, it's it's so tough to say don't start Dez Bryant. <laughs> because, yeah, I mean, you probably still stood. I, yeah. I, I probably still should. I, I guess I shouldn't say don't start him, but don't be. I mean, if your week's going to die, if he doesn't get you at 18, then you're probably going to die. Mm-hmm. So that's just the way it is. Yeah, I don't I don't love the situation, but, you know, Dez is going to be in your lineup if you're in a, in a 12-team league, unfortunately. But if you're in an 8-team league, you might be able to find a spot for Dez on your bench this week if you've got some other options. So yeah. let's let's look at look at it like that. Now, here's a guy who I think <laughs> this is going to sound ridiculous because, uh, gosh, I'm going to sound like such a Titans homer. I think Justin Hunter is somebody that you might see outproduce Des Bryant this week, and that's why he's my sleeper of the week. Yeah, um, I like that one. That it's kind of the flip. Obviously, Titans defense very very good against the pass. Cowboys Dallas defense, asshole against it. Asshole against pass, absolutely. <laughs> just got awful. Um, I mean, they're world-class bad, guys. This defense is going to be one of the absolute worst in the history of the league. It was one of the worst last year, and they got worse. And they got worse. Yeah. So uh, he only caught three passes, Justin Hunter did, in week one. But I think both he and Kendall Wright are in for big games this week. I think Kendall Wright's probably a guy that I like better. Uh, just given the fact that he's going to be targeted more and in PPR leagues, he can put up seven, eight catches, whereas Justin Hunter is more likely to get like four five. Yep. But Justin Hunter could very easily score a touchdown or two in this game. So I like him as a guy who is not normally a starter for your team, but somebody that you might want to consider slipping into that fantasy lineup for week two. Dustin, who is your sleeper for the week? My sleeper for the week is Mark Ingram. Because I, I the Browns got annihilated last week on the ground. Le'Veon Bell tore them apart. I think that run defense might be an issue the whole year. And again, we talked about it earlier. I like Mark Ingram. I, I think that going forward, Sean Payton is going to give him more carries. I think he's better than Kyrie Robinson, especially in that offense and the role he's going to have. I, Pierre Thomas is still going to be there. You'll still have to deal with Pierre Thomas. He'll never see the, he'll never see a huge majority of the carries going his way. But I should say snaps. But I certainly think that this week versus Cleveland, he had two TDs last week. I could certainly see an easy TD game for him this week. And for a guy that's not getting started in a lot of leagues, I could definitely see Mark Ingram starting this week and get some TDs for you. Yeah, Mark Ingram is a guy who I think we're going to be seeing slide up the fantasy boards going forward. I think yep. that he could very realistically finish as a reliable RB2 in fantasy. And yeah. that doesn't mean that a guy like Pierre Thomas can't still be different reliable roles. in that yeah, in that offense. Roles. What? I said different roles. I mean, Yeah, absolutely, roles different year. roles. It's, just, it's different roles. It's not necessarily you're, they're competing for the same – sort of snaps you know they're different players they're both running backs but they're different players the offense can yeah, the offense can sustain them both yeah Mar- mark ingram is not going to catch 10 passes in a game yeah, but pierre exactly. good exactly so and it also depends of course on your scoring system but i i like both those guys going forward which is kind of interesting because like we talked about last week it's been so long since we've had somebody other than marcus colston jimmy graham and drew Brees who we've been excited about they're in sproles, going forward. Yeah. Well, Darren Sproles, sure, but uh, I mean, just in terms of like a a reliable guy that you can really count on from week to week, and I think that both Pierre Thomas and Mark Ingram have that opportunity. Yeah, they certainly have the potential so, for in that offense. 
So guys, that is going to do it for this episode of the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure that you let us know in the comments section below and by pressing that like button. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're new to the channel, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button because that's how you're going to know when we put out a new video and um, I'll be doing Madden content and things like that going forward as well. Now, if you guys have any questions about your lineup this week, make sure that you drop them in the comment section below. We'll be taking any trade advice questions that you guys have. If you want to know who to pick up on the waiver wire after this weekend's games, be sure to drop it in the, in the comment section below. We would love to answer those questions in our next episode. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck in week two. Be sure to tune in next week here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.